Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We will be live shortly. In the meantime, follow, like, and share page. Grab a friend and watch together. Open your hearts, minds, and spirit. Get into position. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Everybody called on that great name lately. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I said, has anybody called on that great name lately? He's been a mother to some, a father to others. And I don't know what I would do without him. 
He's been good. He's been better than good. He's the only name I know that changes atmosphere. And I love to call him. I love to call anybody else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on and clap your hands on them. We're just going to sing a little snippet of this song, if that's all right with you. So I want y'all to help us this morning. I want you to repeat after me. Y'all ready? The song says, I love to call him. 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 You change everything. You make everything. 
For joining us on today you could have chosen to join any worship service tap into any church but you chose to join us on today so whether you're virtual at home or in another place or whether you're in the sanctuary we want to welcome you we welcome you to the place that we call our spiritual home my name is Shayla and this is the place that some people also call alive Alive stands for always living in victory. Here we claim the victory in advance for whatever it may look like, for whatever other people may think. This is also the place in which our pastor is none other than Pastor Ann Taylor. And back in 1998, the Lord deposited something in her heart. And it was this place in which we reside today. And it was this mission or this vision through the voice of Christ, with a call of love, provide a faith community where human uniqueness is celebrated. Someone asked me, what does that mean? That means that that thing inside of you that is unique, that thing inside of you that sets you apart from your brothers or your sisters, that maybe you got picked on for when you were younger. We will take that very gift that God implanted in you and use it to glorify Christ. That's what that means. And we're excited about it. We value uniqueness here. We celebrate our differences because we know it's all the work of God. I just also want to welcome our first time visitors. If this is your first time here at Alive, <laughs> if this is your first time here at Alive, I want you to just wave your hand so someone can greet you with the love of Jesus Christ and we can get connected to you. And then in addition to that, if you're online or you're virtual, say first time. We would love to extend a warm welcome to you and to get you embedded in the fabric that we know is alive. Amen? Amen. I have a few announcements for you. We're blessed to be busy here at Alive, and so uh, one of the things that I'm very passionate about is serving. That's right. Make it do well. <laughs> Thank you. I try. It's not easy. <laughs> 
is serving. I always tell people when you serve with your whole heart, when you get out of bed when you don't feel like it, you push, extend your, you extend your boundaries, and maybe you do something that you're not comfortable in, but you step out on faith and say, I'm going to serve the house of God. When you do that, what happens is other doors open for you. You lock in with other believers that you get connected with. You learn skills that maybe will help you acquire the job that you never thought or dreamed you ever have. And maybe God just will begin to open doors just because of your faithfulness. So I encourage you to find your place, even if it's for one Sunday, and serve. There's many auxiliaries that look for help. The one I'm going to talk about today is our usher auxiliary. These are the people that are tasked with making sure you feel welcome when you come in this house. So if you're interested, if you enjoy people, if you enjoy extending yourself, I encourage you to seek Elder Boykin or Elder Pope. They will provide you more details. Sounds good? Amen. All right. Saturday, April 20th, our men's ministry will fellowship with Pastor Ann Taylor. Yes. Over brunch at IHOP on Skybo Road at 11 a.m. Please tap in with either Elder Allen or Elder Boykin to make sure you sign up. There's also a link online. Uh, this is an opportunity for the fellas to just hang out with your pastor. <laughs> There's nothing better than breaking bread and having conversation, especially for the one that's ahead of your spiritual life. All right, April 7th, communion will be returning here at Alive Ministries. We're excited about communion Sunday. Be sure you join us for our Sunday morning service so that you can just partake in that wonderful, wonderful communion service. Tuesday, April 2nd, Grow Series Bible Study. Here at 7 p.m. Or you can also tap in virtually online. It is an opportunity for Pastor Taylor to just speak to you and teach you how to break apart pieces of the Bible to give you spiritual nuggets so that you can just live the very best life possible. So if you want to partake in that, please make sure you just jot that down. And finally, after service today, Sister Rio and Sister Fallon will be meeting with our youth to just go through a, a drive run through for what we have expecting for us or waiting for us for Easter Sunday. So if you have a youth member that would like to participate, please make sure you stay after service. Amen. And in addition to that, if you could please make sure that we clear the sanctuary quickly this Sunday so that they can go ahead and begin. Amen? Amen. 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 As you all know, one of my favorite parts about reading scripture here in this house is that we're able to select a scripture that touches our heart. Uh, there are some churches where they give you what to read. Here they say, pick something that touches your heart. So we're going to go to Psalm 118. We're going to start at verse 1, and then we're going to bop down to 28. <laughs> Fallon loves it when I use that language. And the good book says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. Verse 28. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Go with me in prayer as we usher in just an amazing service where God will dwell in this house. Father God, we just ask that you have your way. We want you to remove anything from any leader or any servant or any member on today so you can dwell here and walk heavy. If it's not of you, we don't want it. If it's not pure of heart, don't allow it. And if you're not in the midst of it, God, we want to be right where you are. We need to hear from you, God, on today. I pray for every servant, every leader, every member 
that they have the courage and the faith to step out for whatever it is that they need on today. That even if they have to approach the altar and get down on a bended knee, that they ask you for it. Because you are the only one that can heal, deliver, and set free. And we claim our freedom on today, oh God. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised on this morning. We serve a great God. We serve a mighty God. And we just come to give him thanks on this morning. If you have any reason to give God thanks, I just want you to lift your hands and say, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Just for being who you are, God.
where you're at. Stop worrying and put a praise on it. This atmosphere is set. Put a praise on it. Grab a Shanda. What you been praying for? Like a Shanda. Hey, those of you at home, you've been praying for your mother. You've been praying for your father. You've been praying for your brother. You've been praying for your son to get out of jail. He said, put a praise on it. He is here. And if you push your hands in the air and praise him right where you're at, he will bless it. You haven't been praising him. You've been talking and not praising him. He said, praise him right where you at. He called a shanda. He called a bubble shanda. He had another shia. Praise him right where you're at. And watch the miracle. say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I wasn't standing up here thinking of what to say. I was standing here letting the Lord have his way. Oh, what a word, what a word, what a word. What a word, what a word out of the mouth of the prophet. Just told you this morning just to lift your hands and just praise him. Whatever you've been praying for, whatever you've been asking for, just lift your hands this morning. If you can't lift your hands, pat your feet. The Lord is in this building. He is in this service. Lord, I just want to thank you. Oh, my God. We thank those of you that are joining us online. The praise team is praising God. The people in the house have their hands lifted. We're in a good place. We're in a good place. 
Glory to God. Whatever you are dealing with this morning, just lift your hands right where you at. Just lift your hands. Stand to your feet. Just lift your hands this morning. The prophet said, you're not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. My God. Lord have mercy. You're not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. My Lord, I'm just here to do our pastoral briefs, and they're going to be briefs because we want the Lord to continue to have his way. I'm Deacon Allen, and I'm doing my pastoral briefs. Our pastor's in the house today. Put your hands together for our shepherd, Pastor Ann Taylor. She's in the building, and we honor the Lord for her, the visionary of Alive Ministries, where we're always living in victory through the voice of Christ with the call of love provides a faith community where human uniqueness is celebrated we celebrate you for just who you are we celebrate you just as you are and i thank god for this place called the live ministries because i've literally seen lives being changed i have seen lives being changed and we thank god for this place that we can come and be ourselves judgment free zone yes, amen did you hear me judgment free zone because see we all got some vices we all got some stuff that keep us on our knees so we just thank we just thank god that um we're not a church that look to point out or to point at but to introduce you to the God who done it for us. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Listen, those of you online that are tithing, we're going to prepare our hearts for our worship and giving. And we want you to pay attention to the announcements. If you're not online or on our Facebook page, go to our Facebook page and look at the events and the things that's coming up at our live ministries. We're having so much uh, going on in these next couple of months and we want you to be a part of it those of you online those of you that are in the building please 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 connect to our uh, facebook page alive ministries page and and listen out for the announcements that's going to be coming because we're doing big things and and listen i want you to also hear something our theme this year is there are messages everywhere and my God, has that been working? That has been working. There are messages everywhere. And then once you grab hold of that theme and see that you might deem something simple, but there is a message in it for you. Glory to God. So I want you to just look back over this week and see some of the things that you thought was meant to hinder you actually was pushing you forward. There was a message in it. And so that's our theme for this year. There are messages everywhere. Amen. Those of you that are in the building that's giving, you may come down and just give. Give God your best. Give God what you want him to have. But those of you that are tithing, give God what is right and not what's left. And I'm not talking about right hand, left hand. I'm, I'm, I'm just simply saying, don't give God what you have left after you didn't give him what was right. He only asked for 10%. And he said, now prove me and see. He said, you see, won't I? I will Come on, pastor. I will do it. I will pour you out, not give. I will pour Oh, can you just close your eyes and see a pouring? If you're pouring out of a bucket, it is a continued flow. Mind you, it might run out, but when you put it under the faucet, it's going to fill back up and you can pour again. It's going to flow. So just purpose in your heart to just give God what is right. Amen. And I want to encourage the parents to teach your children how to give. Teach your children how to give put something in their hand and teach them how to give 
they're, they're, they're on the games, they're getting sneakers, they're getting all this stuff. But you've got to tell them that it's not you that's providing it for them. And then you're telling them to give back to a God who will continue to provide for you that you might be able to provide for them. So this evening, this afternoon after church, our youth is going to meet. Um, those of you online, please, please, please get in touch with Sister Fallon and Sister Rio. We're on the move for our youth, and we want our youth to be in a part of what God is doing in this next season. So please get in touch with them and find out about the youth program and what they're doing. And we're going to undergird them and support them and supporting our youth. Amen. Glory to God. Has everyone had a chance to give? Those of you online that are tithing and giving. And I want to just point out something to you as well. I don't know if it's, it should be on the screen, but there's um, something on the screen that says Pastor Ann Taylor. I want you to purpose in your heart to sow into the woman of God. Pray for her. Pray for her. Sow into her life, but pray for her. And I'm just going to, she's going to come up now, but pray for her. Because I, I, I look on YouTube and I look on different uh, uh, stations and pastors are going through so much. Pastors are really going through so much. And I just say, Lord, I'm going to continue to pray for my pastor. Nothing will be too good for her when it comes to me because I see the struggle. I see the labor. I see what they have to go through to get a word from God and come before us. So I just want to encourage you, sow and give. God's going to take care of her, but we have to show her we love and appreciate her. Ministry costs, and, 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 and it's not easy. I'm just, I'm just a deacon. I'm telling you, she is carrying a load. If you would just do me a favor right now in the building, just stand to your feet and just, if you, everyone in the building, just stand and point your hand at, at our pastor. Just point your hand at her. Just point your hand at our pastor. Do it, Lord. Nothing missing, nothing broken, and nothing out of place. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet at this time as I bring to the podium our shepherd, our pastor, the leader of Alive Ministries, the founder, Pastor Ann Taylor. I love you so much, Alive Ministries. Um, let me say to my eldest son that you have no idea um, that you are in tune with God as it relates to the spiritual uh, gravity of what we're doing here today. It's amazing you're my son, but today I call, I texted my leader and said, I know there are many battles and struggles that the average person doesn't know of that are spiritual fights. Um, and it's not because uh, of something I've done, but if he gets me, he gets some of you. Because you're living off of the words that are coming out of my mouth. I said to Elder Pope, I said, I'm coming during your spring break. And, she, and we, we love our elder. She's such a, a gift to the body of Christ. And she is at home battling with something that is uh, challenging the body. But I said to her, Pope, I'm just going to come and I'm going to lay in your floor and just let you pray for my head. <laughs> not, not not for my thoughts is so that I stay in a place where God can use me as a vessel people are going through and if we 
don't hear from God, we won't have no other resource. We have nothing else left but God. And that's why I keep a praise on my lips for him. Because I want him to know just how grateful I am. How thankful I am that he loved me in spite of myself. How many people love Jesus today? Come on, let's go. Yes, 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 yes. You may be seated in God's presence. I hope that you that are joining us live and those that are in the, in the, um, in the virtual audience, I hope you understand we are just an ordinary church. Not your, not, not your extraordinary, that's what I'm saying, extraordinary church, extraordinary ministry. Our vision is simply the one that Jesus had, and that's go ye therefore and teach all nations how to become disciples and repeat that pattern every soul that gets saved. So we don't look like the average church. We smell like fish. You may... You, but if you go into a fish market and can't smell the fish, leave out. Something's commercial. But every Sunday, we gather here to remind people of their supernatural power that's given by God through Jesus to live an extraordinary life. Watch this. No matter what. And we believe in that and we're grateful. And listen, we, we talk about money because you talk about money. We need money, you need money. But I hope that our talking about the principles established in the kingdom don't offend you because if you don't have it, you can't give it. But if God ever puts something in your hand, Give some seed on that. But I come to preach to your souls today. This is a wonderful day in the kingdom. It is um, named um, uh, Palm Sunday. How many people have heard that before, Palm Sunday? Um, and so it's a special occasion because this Sunday is when Jesus enters into the city and then in that same city by next Sunday, um, uh, he would, it, between the week, he would have been persecuted and judged and hung. But by next Sunday, isn't that right? Next Sunday's Easter. He'll be up. So these two Sundays, wait a minute. The, that's my church baby right there. These two Sundays, if you say this is a special day for you, this is, if you say now, because you can say, I once was lost. My baby's here pushing me. But now I'm found. I was blind. But now, I, if you say, and you know Jesus did it, just look over to your neighbor and say, my Sunday's coming up. My Sunday's coming up. The Laquita, the reminder that if he got up, it's coming up. That's next Sunday. I can get up too. Y'all be seated. Be, be seated. We I love talking about Jesus. Be seated. I love talking about Jesus. We're going to talk about him today. <laughs> Glory to God. This one here, Lord Jesus. I know what God is doing. She may not know yet, but I know. Glory to God. <laughs> I wish you look over your neighbor, and my bishop said this, and I got it. Uh, uh, if, you, if you've been in church a minute, you'll rejoice off of this. Look over to your neighbor and say, there are mantles to be gathered. No, only, I knew, I knew everybody was going to go See, whenever your leader goes up, there are mantles of that. I wish you look over to somebody and say, I'm willing to catch whatever God has for me. Baby, so excuse me. I, I I need mantles for the next season, mantles for my next destination, mantles for my next assignment. I'm here for spiritual mantles. My bishop said, my 
bishop said, that, that, see, these people don't understand there's mantles to be had. And I said, hmm, she's shifty. Man, I, I wish I, I can't. See, mantles are deep inheritance. I'm not talking about how she preaches or what she does, but the labor of what she went through, she get, I get the mantle she did the time. That's why Elisha got double because he already had her, his, ex I wish somebody said, there are mantles to be had in here. <laughs> okay. I told you I knew what was going on. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. I'm preaching to two audiences, those who have been established in the faith and those who are coming to the faith. So every now and then I go to that deep thing. <laughs> but I want to preach about Jesus under our, our uh, yearly theme this year. There are messages everywhere. There are different signs. There are different proofs. There are different um, evidences <laughs> that is reaching out to you that God sent you a message in the earth and he doesn't wait until Sunday to give it to you. I feel like flowing real. That, but you must be in a spiritual mindset. That's why God is alleviating stressors in your life. I, 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 I don't know why I'm going this to you. This is why God is shuffling all the pieces on the board of your life is because he want to free up space so you can hear him. Oh, hallelujah. So you can see him on your job. I know they're overworking you. I know your supervisor doesn't understand that it's time for you to get a promotion. I feel like I'm prophesying. But I want to tell you there are messages everywhere. And you're tired, but your God still wants to reach you. Your body is experiencing challenges like it has never, ever before. But yet God said, I still have a message for you. Yes, you got more things to do than you have hours. But God is still saying, but I still want to send you a message. Because a message from God, I have you be in hell. And if he says, I'm in here with you, you say, well, then I'll stay. So you got to see their messages everywhere in your good. I feel like preaching. I'm going to go to the text in a minute. Even in your good times, even in your bad times, there are messages. I'm going to go on and say it. Your enemies sent you a message. They sent you a message because you're anointed. Because ain't nobody fighting somebody who's nobody. So if you're being fought by anything, you got a message that you must be up to something. The devil's trying to stop you from getting to something. And if he sent his biggest imps to try to stop you, he must know you must be a giant. Tell somebody, I'm about to wreck this place because I already got the victory. I don't even need to fight some of these stuff. I just need to let this mind that was in Christ Jesus I gotta think like Jesus. I'm gonna get to my stuff that I said. I gotta think like he thought. And he thought, nobody takes my life. I lay it down. I give you permission to offend me. I feel like preaching. I give you permission to try to hold me down. Because I understand in how many days, y'all? Three days, I'm getting back up. I just need to look at some people that say, I've been down. I'm talking about pastor way down. But somehow I still got up. I don't know how I did it somehow I still feel like I got my right mind somehow I still feel like being married again somehow I still feel like my body's going to be healed tell somebody Jesus is a lifter you doing it you doing it because my son bought me this sweatshirt Jesus and sneakers he's pushing me And so, can you hear this even if, uh, even if you don't open it? Just hear me. Out of those, but the earth is just getting the news. Would it scare you if I told you the earth was prepared for your coming even though people were not? I feel like ministering in here. 
That's what I'm saying. Before you were born, God had your whole life mapped out in eternity. So he placed those pieces in your timeline. But he already knew you were going to come out at the beginning before you entered it. I wish you would tell somebody, these people don't know me. But the earth does. Because the earth is the Lord in the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell in. My daddy is rich in houses and land. He holds the world, I feel like preaching, in the palm of his hand. Rubies and diamonds, silver and gold. John chapter 12, verse 12. All of the people of God are assembled in Jerusalem for the Passover. The Passover is the celebration that commemorates when the death angel had come through the land in Egypt and they were commanded to take the blood of a lamb. Yes. Jesus yes. is the lamb. The blood of the lamb. Yes. And put it on their doorpost. Yes. And death passed them over. So each year they celebrated the remembrance of that. They had set up schedules for past. I feel like preaching yes. now set up schedules for Passover. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. They had planned, much like a uh, convocation, where their day sessions were teaching and examples, and nighttime was worship. They assembled generally every day for the Passover at 6 a.m. They would get morning blessings and preparation. And they would begin the traditional blessings as a ritual of purification for their mind and their bodies for today's events. I feel like preaching. At 7.30 a.m., they would gather at the temple. This is just not exactly accurate, but a, an estimation, poetic liberty to explain what it was for a Jew on the day Jesus came in. So by 6 a.m. they were in their rituals by 7 30 they gathered at the temple uh the community would have a procession to the temple and morning prayer and they would do services and offer thanks and praise midday 12 p.m. they would perhaps have the passover meal preparation workshop <laughs> because they had to teach all of the jews and the young jews how passover went so while they were doing they were training by 2 p.m they perhaps had an historical lecture called the majid that is the retelling of, i need me see Ooh, I feel like preaching. It is the retelling of the Exodus story. The Majid is the central part of the Seder, which is the traditional meal. By 4 p.m., they probably reflected and had community discussions that helped a small group of teachings so that people understand why we do what we do. Uh huh. And by 5.30, perhaps they had an evening prayer and lamp lighting. They have a busy day. They gather for evening prayer. That was the sacred tradition of the lighting of the lamp, symbolizing the transition from day to night. And by 6.30, they ain't done, p.m., they have the Passover Seder meal. That is the meal that is commemorating with wine and eating and bitter herbs to remember about the hardship of coming out of bondage. Would you mind looking over your neighbor and say, I didn't come out easy. Maybe it was just a ta-da for you, but my habit's still kicking me. Would you tell somebody, I didn't come out easy. I came over here to the Lord, but I'm still working on some things. I didn't come out easy. I ran and he chased me. I came back and I went again. But through it all, tell somebody I still love God. I still love him. I, how did I get, how did I, how did I get here? 
they, they, fought, they took part in what they call bitter herbs. That is the ability to make a flavor out of something that's bitter. I'm talking to a few people that had a few nervous breakdowns, but you ain't tell nobody. You cried two hours in your car, just rolled around in circles. You didn't tell nobody, but tell somebody my bitter days gave me a better praise. I praise God better, cause I know what he's done. I praise him better than the average person, cause I know how he brought me. Tell somebody it was bitter. But I mixed it with some good stuff. For the light afflictions endured but for a moment. It was nasty. It was painful. It was hurtful. But when God got finished, it was good that I was afflicted. Look over to somebody and say, I learned more from the bad stuff than I did from the good. Oh, hallelujah, I'm coming. It was a long day for them. They had special recipes. By 8.30 p.m., there were songs of praise and a closing blessing. But in John chapter 12, the Bible say in the middle of the schedule, in the middle of the planned activities, verse 12, the next day, the great cloud that had come for the Passover schedule saw that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, verse 13. See, you got to see what happens between 13. I'll read 13, then I'll go back. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And I knew you wouldn't understand it because it doesn't make sense because that, that is verse 12. And verse 13, verse 12 is they're on their way to scheduled activities. If you were a Jew, you couldn't miss church. Okay, that's, that's a good thing y'all ain't Jews. You couldn't miss giving. You couldn't, you couldn't miss tithing because somebody would pull you up and say, hey, wait a minute, we don't do that. We got to hold true to the principle. Somebody will pull you up. So you didn't miss the prayer. You didn't miss uh, the giving. You didn't miss the fellowship. Because that was a no-no. You can't do that. But verse 13 says somebody, it wasn't their lunch break, broke tradition and they were supposed to be somewhere according to the tradition but verse 13 says they took palms and went out to meet him they started praising him without a class i feel like preaching they started blessing him without training i know you don't understand it yet but if you were a Jew, you could not make side trips. But I want somebody to tell me, in order for them to praise God, they will have to disappoint somebody else. In order for them to praise God, they had to say no to tradition. I wish you would tell somebody where your heart is, that's where your actions are. I'm going home. If you want to know somebody's heart, look at their actions. Okay, that's not just psychology. That's scripture. The Bible says, guard your heart, for out of it flows everything you do. I feel like preaching now. So when their hearts were torn, 
toward tradition when their hearts were toward their mama told them to do. Don't forget when you grow up, go to church on Sunday. Tradition. Don't forget, you know, you got to pay your tithes. Tradition. And if you don't watch it, you'll do the right thing of God and not my action. That's how you can tell somebody love you. It's not by their mouths, but by their actions. For your heart determines everything you do. I've had a change of heart. Their hearts were toward the tradition. And tradition is good as a teacher. Until I preach it. And the Bible says that when you follow rules, it become a hard task master. So what God does is he brings us in through Jesus and we learn discipleship. Huh? We learn what is right and what's wrong, what is appropriate and what's not appropriate and what strengthens your spirit and what does not, what tears you down and what builds you up, what kind of mind you have, what kind of words, what kind of manner. See, you, when you're a child of God, you learn that. But by the time Jesus comes in, if I estimate it right, I believe, yes, they have observed the same tradition for 1,300 to 1,500 years. I've been in church a long time, Fallon. But who see Jesus when he passes by? See, the ones that will see him are not stuck in tradition. They are at a point, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like, where it's become real now. That we're not just singing the lyrics to the song, we're embodying it now. We're not just in church listening and just with our outward ear we, and not getting happy. We are ingesting that. And the Bible says it this way. The time is now and the hour has come for true worshipers. To worship him in spirit and truth. You know that other part. Alex, if there are true worshipers, then there must be, I ain't going to say false. I'm going to say untrue worship. See, the untrue worshipers are not bad people. It's not that they ain't been in church a long time. It means they haven't learned that you cannot just have the truth of who God is and shout off of that. It must, you must embody the spirit of it. When your spirit and the truth come together, When it's no longer words. So by the time Jesus is entering the city, just by the time he's entering the city, everybody doesn't recognize him because they're spending time celebrating who Jesus is, not commemorating. See, celebration is to be excited about the idea of it, and it's a joyous moment. Sunday is a day of celebration. But we can do it every Sunday until we forget. Wait a second. Jesus definitely never fails. Wait a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There is nothing he cannot do. 
See, that's, that's, see, celebration is excitement for a thing or a person. Commemoration is respect and honor for that thing. And when you move from, ooh, celebration, we had a great time. Ooh, that was a good one. When you move from celebration into the recognition of who Christ really is, those numbers are few. I'm going to tell you why they're few. There were thousands, prophets of Nehemiah, thousands of traditional Jewish worshipers thousands not including the women and children coming every year to convocation coming every Sunday got their garbs on and everything but the ones who say I don't want to pay for my lamb or whatever I had to offer up they started taking off their clothes I don't want to pay I want to give do y'all see the difference Very different. When you have a change of heart, it doesn't go from I have to pay time percent of my tithe. It goes into I know who he is, the least I could do. I feel like I'm only preaching to people who have a change of heart. Because when a where a person's heart is, that's where their money will be. You can teach the concept. But if the heart, and I got to say something, I've had a change of heart about the tradition we call church Sunday morning. I just had a change of heart. Just like I had to change the outfit today. I was coming out today with this whole linen white. I thought, woo, it's springtime with linen. I got outside of, brrr. I said, let me go put my son's sweatshirt on today. And so I've had a change of heart about how my worship looks to God. And some days it may be I'm in the floor. Some days it may be I'm shouting. Some days it may be it's palms. Some days it may be I'm throwing my clothes. Or, because the praise they did was impromptu. Ain't nobody took no palms and clothes off. This is the first and only time we hear this. They did something out of the ordinary because they were tired of tradition. I wouldn't say they were tired of tradition. They recognized something greater. Tradition is good as a foundation, but we must move to individual communication and engagement with Christ. Individual. Nobody had a meeting. Nobody said, let's get some power. They just grabbed that, this power, this glory, what can I get? And Jesus comes riding through on the donkey, no less. Riding through, humble and lowly, not looking like a king. But if I got to tell somebody real quick, I'm going to look in this camera, Mary. If you can't recognize Jesus among the donkeys, all these donkeys walking around here. <laughs> but if you get past the donkey and say, y'all know what I'm saying, say, where is Jesus? Would you look at somebody and say, I got a whole lot going on. But I'm looking around and say, I know God is in here somewhere. You know why, Tammy? He promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. I'm looking for Jesus. I've had a change of heart. You can keep your tradition. I've had a change of heart. I do like black and white too, but I've had a change of heart. I got a clergy collar, three or four of them in my closet now, but I've had a change of heart. I know we're supposed to do this and do that next, following up, but I had a change of heart. If I see Jesus passing by, I'm gonna step over your program. I'm gonna 
going to step over your seat because I got to get to Jesus because I see my way maker coming my way. I see my healer. I got to go home. Coming my way. I see my breakthrough coming my way. Shut your neighbor and say, when I see Jesus, I'm coming out with a praise. When I see him, when I feel him, I'm coming out with a praise. I'm not apologizing. I've had a change of heart. The tradition talked about Jesus. But when he passed by, they got to see Jesus. I want to see him now. Watch this. I said, I don't want to see, I'm, I don't want to see success and I like that. I don't want to see, Alex, I want to see God. Now, there's only one way you can see him. Only one way. And the Bible says the word only. I did be sequel. He put only before seeing God. He says it this way. Only the pure in shall if you're seeing devils your whole life, baby, check your heart. If you, <laughs> I got to go home. I've had, I got to be honest, I've had to change your heart. And in a split second, everything I do changes. I've been in church a long time. When I was five years old, I spoke before an, an August body of believers. Um, I don't remember much about my childhood, but what I do remember is significant. I had childhood trauma, by the way. That's probably why I don't remember it. Um, and um, experiencing my mother get shot in the head and my little sister getting smashed by chest dress and my father down there. I can go on. But I do remember one Bible study, the adults, there were no children church back then. That's, that's why I know so much about the Bible, because some of these children are listening. That's right, that's right, that's right. And um, so I was in the Bible study, and they were talking about pants. And that, that religion, within that religion, you couldn't wear pants. Right, right. And one lady said, Bishop, but the snow, is, in those days, snow was like 12 feet. The snow. And how I'm going to get to work, I got to ride the bus. And I remember as a little girl saying, the Lord will keep your legs warm. <laughs> That's probably why I got arthritis now. I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow I had believed what they were saying about God. And the bishops, every time he get a chance, come up here. Tell them what you said. The Lord, it was just a script at that point. The Lord will keep the legs warm, the Lord. But he recognized my faith as a little child. I've been in church a long time. I've sang about him. I've preached about him. I've been every possible position in the church. Usher, uh, choir director, musician, um, uh, cleaning the bathroom, pastor's aid committee. I've done it all. I've done it all. I didn't last long as an usher, though, because when they marched around, I was supposed to stop. But I was marching around with the I kept going past the offering. That didn't work out for me. But I've had a change of heart. Everything I do now, I mean everything. I'm never making a mistake with a word with you. I'm not, I'm, I'm very mindful. You know why? I've had a change of heart. I've understood my divine assignment. And I take it very seriously, even if you don't even know the extent of it. Because the change of heart will have you pivot. Yeah. It'll have you moving and shifting in the spirit. And you might as well, those prophetic people, tell the people, you don't know which way I'm going to come because I'm going to follow the spirit. The Bible says in the spirit, it's like a wind. Who can tame it? And so when I pray today, I'm not praying that you get the concepts 
of this text, which is when you're doing things with and for God and to him, you step out of limits. That's the whole thing. It's the whole thing. It's getting out of your comfortable zone. That's the whole message. I write it. I write the claim of my text at the beginning of all my messages because I need to remember why I'm saying this. And it is sometimes your spirituality will cause you to have multiple sifts within. Holy Spirit begins to change you. Then your actions change. You don't fight as much as you do. You don't, you don't feel the need to say anything back. You don't, you, don't, you don't have to seek revenge, you see? Instead of me teaching the message, you got to do the transformation. But be not deceived. You're changing now. Don't let nobody fool you. It, it, it may not be in your brain, but it's in your spirit. Tell somebody. Because the minute you heard the word, the word... Just started doing work. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So would you look at your neighbor and say, there's been some spiritual work already done because I came to hear this word today. There's some spiritual work already done. And so I'm not really here but I'm here. You know, I'm really not here because I see Jesus. So I can't go over to the fleshly because I've had a change of heart. And I can't explain it. Can you imagine them going back to the Jewish assembly and telling them where they had been all day? They would have got scolded. Because the Jesus, we, the lamb we speak of is not a living lamb. But behold he who comes to take away the sins, the burdens, and the struggles of mankind. Let's stand all over this building. And you're getting out. I don't know how it's happening. Is, is that change of time or... It's 12, 18. Oh, wait a minute, sit down. I got 15 more minutes. No, I just, no, 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 no. I just, I just can't. Count it as a blessing. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you see, when we praise him and we hear his teaching and his word, deliverance comes. I want those who are working the altars to work the aisles today. I'm going to pray a general prayer. And if there's someone here that wants to be saved when I need multiple people moving because someone may want to give their life to the Lord after hearing this message, you, you may say, you know, I don't know why I come every year on Easter because you feel that little tug. Today is your day to... Uh, give your life to the Lord sir just it's easy it's just saying God come into my home house and and I recognize who Jesus is I don't quite understand everything but I do believe in this sacred moment that I could be forgiven of all all of my wrongdoing, watch this, not just past, but future, that I don't have to have the guilt of my past. I don't have to beat myself up. I don't have to have my internal mind telling me how bad of a person I am because once Jesus comes in, he loves me with an everlasting love. And I know it was him that kept me going. You, you, to the one that's been saved before and you're saying I've been saved but I sort of lost my grip you know I, I got to get back into what I already know to be true and already know to be right say to one of our prayer counselors listen I got to get back in my place and I want you to pray for my strength in the Lord 
to that young woman, that young man, listen, I want to tell you this. We don't know all our teenagers have to face. We don't. They're in a world we, we didn't grow up in. And then we put extra pressure on them for this and extra pressure on that. And life for a teenager is a day of daily decisions. Sometimes our teenagers get real heavy about it because they're not as wise as you. So life is hard for them. Teenager, let somebody pray for you. So you won't collapse under the pressure look at our teenagers ask them baby do you want prayer I'm not going to pray oh you you need to get yourself together don't pray for them like that say baby God loves you and so do I I'm here teenagers are you here do you need prayer have you have you accepted this great offering of Christ walking alongside of you and if you need prayer for anything reach out say listen I'm going through something I can't even tell you my mind is a reach out and say pray for my mind pray for my body pray for my life pray for my finances pray for my relationships pray for my children pray for my mother Let, reach your hand out now because God is moving he gave us so much time to do this appeal because we generally rush to get you out but it's your time you have a song you want to minister Fallon in any way come on get this prayer today I pray a prayer as God begins to minister in song I pray today that you have a change of heart. That your actions are not the issue. You weren't about, well, I did this and I did that. And Pastor, you, you just don't know. I got to give up this. I can, right now, I got, no, 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 no. See, that's what tradition did. It made you look at actions. You know, the old folks used to say, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. And I'm praying for your change of heart. The change of heart simply says, God, I, I see you and how you're trying or using various things to bring me to a life of goodness. That's, that's what prayer. You're bringing me to a life of goodness and I want to experience goodness in this land. I don't want to always be buffeted. I don't want to always go through. I want to have peace in you that despite how much I make, despite uh, who I'm with, despite what I drive or, or where I live, that at any moment when I see you like Jesus coming to the city, I will acknowledge you, honor you, and praise you in my way. A change of heart, I pray. That going forth, that even on next Sunday, you will begin to see <laughs> the works of Jesus and why he did that. So that you can have examples on how to stay calm, examples on how to not retaliate, and to how to have peace. Because the world won't give it to us. And so I pray today for hearts, not minds, not lives, right now hearts. And we consider it done in Jesus' name. In a few minutes, come minister. Can you listen to the song as she ministers? And then we're going to ask if uh, she got the baby.
Today's my day. Come on, minister. You changed my name. Yes, God. I might limp away. But I'll never be the same. But I'll never be the same. Keep ministering. We're going to ask if the ushers would. Today is Palm Sunday. I want today to be a remembrance if you would give them to the door that you can praise God without that sweet heart that you have. And because you're here, your heart is saying, God, I thank you. Let this victory, this symbol of love, symbol of praise. They're still ministering. Let them minister. And I pray God's choices, blessings on you. In Jesus' name, they're still ministering. We still love you. We love you. Hold on, hold on, wait. Don't disconnect just yet. If you enjoyed our time together, I need you to be the evangelist, be the prophet in someone else's life by sharing this message today. I've enjoyed our time together. I hope you have too. And meet me here at 11 a.m. See you then. God bless you.